All rise. The 14A District Court. 14A District Court, State of Michigan. County of Washington. <laughs> now in session. Judge J. Cedric Simpson. Now in session. The Honorable Judge J. Cedric Simpson preside. Okay. It's been a long day. I don't know what happened. I don't even look at it. Can you state your name, sir? John, John Torres. All right. This is the um, the date of the adjourned sentencing date. There was statements given by the uh, mothers of the uh, two young ladies um, to the court. They asked the court to look at uh, additional information, which the 911, um, the recordings of the 911 were sent to the court. The court had uh, reviewed them. Um, was there anything else from either side before the court goes into its decision? Anything from the people? No, thank you, Your Honor. Anything from the defense? No, Judge, you've given a sample time. Thank you. Um, let me just say that, um, and I guess there isn't an easy way for me to say this. And, and I guess I don't know. I know the mothers gave their statements at the last hearing. I don't know. Was there anything additional you wanted to tell the court? No, from neither. Okay. Um, there, there isn't an easy way for the court to say this, except for to say that, um, well, first of all, and I'll give everyone another opportunity to speak after I say what I'm going to say and what the court looks at, what the court has at least surmised. Uh, the defense's position is, is that certainly the defendant ought to be sentenced on the charge that he pled to. Um, much of that, frankly, um, I guess bears on the, the concept, or at least what has been said, that the defendant, Mr. Torres, was not in a position to see the accident. Um, and that he was someplace else, which led to the plea. And again, it's not the court's province to get involved in what the particulars of the charge are, but to try to do its best to mete out a um, just sentence. Um, part of the reason also that the court had made a determination to at least hear the 911 tapes, I have a copy of the police report as well as Mr. Torres' statements, um, was because I was going and I said to the parents that there may not be anything that the court could do, but you were going to be heard by this court. And um, in doing that, some things, as I saw them, were a bit disturbing to me. And, you know, I'm, I'm not in, nor should I be, in a position necessarily to do some investigation to try to figure out what transpired entirely. But um, ultimately the issue became, and I, I will make no bones about it, that if this court believed despite the charges, that the defendant was indeed basically present when this when the vehicle went off the road and the accident occurred, um, that changes the court's perspective on what would be a proper sentence in this case. So initially in listening to the 911 calls. Um, particularly, there were 
a few other calls, but um, I listened to Mr. Torres call to 911. And that initially caused me some concern about whether or not the defendant saw this accident. And here's why. And again, I will give an opportunity to respond, but um, Mr. Torres initially contacts 911 and what was said to the court by Mr. Torres and what he had maintained to probation is, is that he didn't see this accident. I'm having a very difficult time believing that. And let me explain my reasons why. Defense counsel, I think, properly stated before that um, he had, that Mr. Torres had called from someplace else. Mr. Torres contacts 911, and it's a very, it's an odd call because of the way that I think the dispatcher was responding to Mr. Torres. But one of the things that was said is Mr. Torres put himself at First Street off of Superior. The dispatcher says, that's not where we have you. Put a pin in that because that becomes important in the court's mind. At some point, Mr. Torres then says, I'm at First Street. He is then headed back to the location of the initial contact between the vehicles. Okay. All of that being said, I then review the police report and Mr. Torres's statement, and if Everyone can recall one of the things that the court was looking at um, was did Mr. Torres chase these individuals and cause this accident? One of the things that was said in counter to that is, is that he's not near the accident, doesn't see the accident. Again, I'm having a difficult time believing that. And part of the reason I'm having a difficult time believing that is because there is an EMU security camera that's referred to in the police report that has these vehicles traveling down here on River Drive, both at a high rate of speed, because Mr. Torres is in an Equinox, I do believe, and there's a truck. At some point, they get to the corner of here on River Drive and Superior, According to Mr. Torres, it is a red light. The truck stops. He stops at some point. The truck continues through the red light. Mr. Torres indicates from the report, at least as I read it, that he then turns on a green light. Now, how that, that certainly all could happen. <clears throat> Bottom line is, is that they are then, Mr. Mr. Torres indicates in the police report that at some point on Superior, he disengages from, as he puts, following the vehicle. It's best the court's able to determine the distance from that corner of Superior where the turn is made to the railroad tracks is approximately a thousand feet. Mr. Torres is then, if he is correct and he is saying where he is to the dispatcher, this is where we take the pen out of that. 
that he's at first, but the dispatcher saying, that's not where we have you. Mr. Torres is further up that road. But even if I give the defendant the benefit of the doubt that as far as he went was first, the railroad tracks are approximately 100 feet from that location. It is a clear shot from that location to see those railroad tracks and that intersection. It is not as though there is a crest. There it is as though there is something that from first would obstruct one's view. The other thing that was specifically asked of Mr. Torres is a, he made it very clear that he did not go over the railroad tracks. But the additional thing that was asked is, is whether or not he crossed a bridge. Mr. Torres says he did not cross a bridge. That can't be true. Because as you're going up Superior, to get to first, you have to cross the bridge. Moreover, when Mr. Torres is later questioned and talking to the dispatcher, he had to not only cross that bridge once, he had to cross it twice because he had to go over the bridge and he had to come back to get to the location where it occurred. I'll tell you something, Your Honor. In a moment. No. No, no. Moreover, when you listen to the other 911 calls that are called in, two vehicles that are traveling to the south, so they're traveling the opposite direction from the Getty's roundabout. They see the vehicle go in up, well, basically off the railroad tracks and have the accident. From really, and honestly, I mean, I don't know exactly where they are, but from um, putting again the defendant where he says he is, they are at a much further distance from those tracks than would be Mr. Torres. He's much further, let me preface this by saying, through the other hearings, it was stated to the court that he is nowhere near the tracks and that he is further from the tracks where this occurred. That can't be true and everything else be true. It just can't be. He is within 100 feet, really between 80 to 100 feet of that intersection when that vehicle goes off the road. Certainly, and, and it, it also is perplexing from the court standpoint, I thought I understood it initially. When Mr. Torres is telling the dispatcher that he has the license plate of the other vehicle, one is thinking or at least I was thinking that he is getting that license plate by following the vehicle. That's not the case. He actually had the license plate of the vehicle prior to it turning on to Superior. Hence, realistically, there is no reason whatsoever for him to have continued
there is no reason whatsoever for him to have continued up Superior behind that truck. Now, if somebody, and counsel, I will give you an opportunity to address the court on that. And like I said, I'm not here and I explained to mom, I, I, it's not my province regarding the charge. My province is to meet out the sentence with what's in front of me. And again, I will give an opportunity for a response, but I can tell you where the court is at this point. The court at this point is of the opinion and that Mr. Torre saw this happen. When he talks about the kicking up of dust and other things, the only place in that area that's going to happen is basically at those tracks. It's not going to happen on the turn off of here on River Drive on to Superior. You're not paid. And, you know, and I'll just say it. I don't, when I look at all of this, I'm having a hard time believing that he's telling me the truth about this. Ms. Weidling, can you just put that GPS up? That yes, overhead. Can I say something? I'll let you, if your counsel no. believes that should speak, then I will let you speak. But Which are you ready for this? I'm ready. Can you blow that up or you? Your lock. Do you need a closer? Huh? Yeah, I just need it closer to the That's good. Right. Uh, yep, yeah, right there. At the very bottom of the screen, you're going to see the turn from Huron Park, Huron River Drive on to um, on to Superior. Up top of the screen. Uh, sir, sir, you will not disrupt these proceedings. I do not want to kick you out, but you are not going to disrupt these proceedings. Up at the top of the screen, you'll see the railroad tracks. And if you look at, I think the first, let me just, if you look down from the railroad tracks off of Superior, that first street coming off, which would be as you're looking at the screen to the left, that's first street. From there, you can see that there is a clear shot to that intersection with the railroad tracks. If Mr. Torres is there, he has a clear shot to that whole area. When you also look at it just in terms of his timing of the calls, the other calls that are coming in, he, he can't not be in that area and see what happens because the other calls come in shortly thereafter and they're traveling north from the Gettys um, area, traveling southbound on Superior. They see it. So again, I... Not here, you know, I, I don't. I, I'm not here to worry about 
what's charged, what's not charged. I have to meet out the best sentence I can with what I have. And I will let you know, and counsel, I will give you an opportunity if you want to somehow or another speak with your client prior to the court imposing sentence. But I do believe that jail time is appropriate given what I see. I can't, in giving that, I can't bring back these young ladies. I, and I told the parents, I can't do that. But I certainly can do the best that I can to make sure something occurs. If I believed that Mr. Torres was not present, that it was as it was portrayed to this court, a circumstance where he could not have seen it, that he would have been so far down on Superior that he wouldn't have seen the railroad tracks, then that's where I would land. And I would have no problem landing with that and justifying it. I can't, based upon his own statements, justify that as being true. He, he had to see it. He's telling me he's two to three cars behind them, that he's following them, and that he's at first, and it's a clear shot to those railroad tracks. I, if somebody wants to tell me how I can come to a different conclusion, then please tell me that. But I don't, I, ha I can take into account in terms of sentencing whether or not a defendant is being truthful with the court in terms of what they're saying. And I will be blunt. I'm just a plain talker. I don't believe that he is. Counsel, if prior to your, Mr. Torres is, I, I don't know that you can see him or not. He really wants to make a statement. I will arrange, counsel, I know you don't want him to. If you want, because since you're not here, if you want to talk to him, I will arrange to get him on a Zoom and get you guys into a breakout room so you can talk. No, Judge, that's fine. I'm ready to make a comment when you're ready to hear it. I don't need to oh, more to Go ahead. Sir. Judge, um, with all due respect, this is wildly inappropriate. For you to be doing an investigation on your own, for you so, to be pulling hold on, up counsel, counsel, Go counsel, ahead, Judge. Counsel, you're the boss. Counsel, yes, Judge. Stop. Stop a moment. I think I acknowledged that. I'm not here doing an investigation. The question is, is what was represented to this court is that he could not have seen it, that he was not following them. Anything that I have here is not an investigation. All I did was listen to the 911 and read the police report. So in that case, if you think that's inappropriate, then fine, you can go ahead with your statement. And then I will proceed to my sentence. Right. In addition, Judge, you pulled up a map and you said that it's impossible to see or that it's possible to see where the accident was without actually being at the scene viewing it. There was no trial. There was no any opportunity for the defense to present you with uh, counter evidence or anything like that, Judge. It, Counsel, it, you wanna, I what do you want to give me? What do you want to give I don't me? Wanna, I'm, I don't want to give you anything. What because do you want to give me? No, okay. counsel, if you're going to say I'm being unfair, what do you want to give me? Judge, I want to because tell you that I, that I don't that believe you to be considering court, anything that will come after that. What you represented to this court, and I realize you're advocating for your client about him being someplace further from that scene, it, it's not true. It's his own statements. These are not anything where I went out there and I'm looking at something or I'm doing whatever. It's just placement. He's saying he's at first. I just listened to the tape. I didn't do anything. I didn't go out there and investigate, talk to any witnesses, do anything like that. I did that and looked at a map. That's all I did. Right. Judge, so if you want none to of give me something, counsel, I'll, you can come here two hours late. Give me what you want to give me. Judge, I don't believe you should be considering anything after the fact that of the initial accident. He, he's being sentenced for failure to stop at a PD accident. It has nothing to do with what he did afterwards. It's completely inappropriate what for the court. What do you mean to be... what he did afterwards? After the accident, when he was initially rear-ended, that's what he pled to, failing to stop at that accident. 
It's not failing to stop at the accident that, that the girls were involved in. It's failure to stop at the accident where he was rear-ended. Ms. Reiser your agrees. Wishes, if your client, knowing what I'm going to do, wishes to withdraw his plea, I will consider that motion. Judge, I would also ask that you recuse yourself at this point. Denied. Understood. And I can, if, if you wouldn't mind uh, allowing me to speak with Mr. Torres, I, I'm, my guess is he's going to withdraw his plea. I'm sorry. If you wouldn't mind allowing me to speak with Mr. Torres to make sure this is going to happen, but my guess is he will withdraw his plea. Can we set up a breakout room for Mr. Torres in signing on to Zoom in one of the conference rooms? Mr. Torres, we're going to put you into one of the conference rooms out there. We're going to put that machine into a into a breakout room and put your counsel into a breakout room so you guys can talk. Court will stand in recess. We're back on the record in the uh, Torres matter. Had an opportunity, um, well, first of all, that counsel had an opportunity to speak with his client. Been also an opportunity for the court to speak with counsel. Um, they are going to consider a motion to withdraw the plea or the other and the like, the court is going to give the opportunity for them to file the written motion to do so if necessary. Um, I'm not saying that that's what they're going to do, but give that opportunity. So I'm going to adjourn these proceedings for the motion as well as sentencing. I'll set both at the same time um, for to March, my next sentencing, March 13th. At I want a special time so that 3 p.m. All right, March thirteenth at three p.m. for a continuation of the proceedings. I have directed uh, counsel that everybody needs to be in person at that proceeding. Understood. All right, bond will continue. Thank you. All right, thank you, Governor.